got my leveled up to mommy t-shirt on. Um, this video might be really long and all over the place. I spent all yesterday afternoon um, trying to organize my notes, my thoughts and everything. I kind of just like wrote things down as they came to me throughout my pregnancy. And so yesterday I just kind of sat down, tried to organize them and make sense of them. So this, this video is going to be all about pregnancy symptoms. And I had a lot of them. I know that some women don't have that many. Some have a lot. Some have none. Uh, according to my mom, she had none. <laughs> um, my sister doesn't remember any of hers, really. Uh, her daughter's seven. I don't know that I could like really forget a lot of these because they plagued me pretty much throughout the whole pregnancy. Um, so I'm just going to dive into it because there's a lot. Um, and I will be referring to notes <laughs> because I can't remember every single thing because there was a lot. So, um, as I mentioned in a previous video, when I talked about how I found out that I was pregnant, um, in the beginning, there were a lot of symptoms that could have been period symptoms, which a lot of times when you're newly pregnant very early in your pregnancy, you don't know because, um, early pregnancy symptoms can feel like period symptoms. But mine were a week early, which never happened. So I knew that something was off. Um, so I was really, really tired. That was one thing. I had to pee a lot, um, which obviously in the beginning, you don't have a baby weighing down on your bladder like I do now. But um, the hormones that you have, the, the hormone changes that you have um, do make you have to pee a lot. Pretty much from the very, very beginning. And I'm used to it now because I'm eight months pregnant and actually like I'm feeling out of breath like for no reason and uh a little bit like like it's the blood flow and I'm even having issues like sitting up now like I have to lay down a lot more particularly because of the stabbing and digging pain like in my vagina because the baby is getting lower because she'll be here soon but uh I find myself like like kind of lightheaded but like not lightheaded but like my extremities and just like everything I think like feels kind of like tingly um kind of like a lightheaded feeling like my blood isn't in all the places that it should be <laughs> so <coughs> that's a thing um but yeah pretty much my whole pregnancy I've had to pee constantly and it's something that I'm used to now, but it's going to be so nice and so weird to like not have to pee all the time. And it's not even that you have a full bladder. It's just like the sensation of having to pee constantly. So you'll pee and sometimes you'll really have to pee, especially if you hold it in for a while, because if you go every time you feel like you have to go, you're going to be on the toilet constantly. But, um, it's just that feeling constantly, which is terrible. And then like the bigger you get, you have that feeling and like constipation and a baby. And by now she's probably like maybe six and a half, seven pounds. Uh, when I went for my, what's today? Uh, I know that today is Thursday. Today's the 18th, I think. And I went in on the 18th of July. So I went in on July 3rd to have my growth scan. So, and they estimated that she was six pounds, but ultrasounds aren't accurate. So who knows? And I did have even some round ligament pain in the first trimester when I was newly pregnant, whenever I would cough. And then my cyst that I had that is now over 11 centimeters that they found when it was five centimeters when I was eight weeks pregnant, um, when I would cough, I would also have some pain on my left side where that cyst was, where the cyst is, um, both again, whenever I would cough. So um, I did have nausea in my first trimester. Um, it wasn't super horrible, but it did kind of like linger throughout the day. I was never somebody that really needed to 
to have breakfast like I breakfast was kind of like an elective like nice to have kind of thing but a lot of times I would sleep too late or I wasn't really hungry I typically get breakfast like if I'm on vacation or if it's like on the weekend and we go to brunch or something but I'm typically not a breakfast person but I had to be for my first trimester um, and not even like a proper breakfast but I would just grab something to put on my stomach because um, I just, I felt nauseous and it wasn't ever like super strong, but it was like a nagging feeling and it was enough to just make you feel down. And, uh, so I would have it in the morning and then it would come back kind of like around dinner time. So I had to make sure that I ate dinner, you know, on time. And, um, but in my second trimester, it did go away. I think I only threw up like once or twice in my first trimester. The nausea basically was just kind of like a dull nausea and it didn't really cause me to vomit very much, probably only a couple times. And I think it also, it had, cause I take vitamins every day. Um, a lot of them are for my digestion because I have digestive issues um, even before I was pregnant, pretty much my whole life. So, Taking pills when I'm pregnant is hard because I have a stronger gag reflex and um, my stomach just doesn't doesn't like them. So I remember one time I was in the shower and I had just taken pills and I think I might have like had a little something to eat and I barfed up like a whole pill like that hadn't digested yet. Then like my boobs were really, really sore and gigantic and now they're still really big but I, can't, I feel like I can't even tell like they look small because my belly's so big now. But, um, and I would have cramping, I had cramping the week before I anticipated having my period. Um, I was very, very sensitive to smells. I remember coming down out of a staff meeting and not being able to go into either bathroom because someone blew both of them up. And typically, I mean like, yeah, bathrooms don't smell great. And a lot of times, you know, if you're not pregnant or something like that, uh, you can deal with them, like it's unpleasant, but literally like I would have barfed. And I remember one person, I came out and they were like, girl, are you pregnant? I was like, nah, because I just found out that weekend that I was pregnant with home pregnancy tests. I hadn't had my first ultrasound yet. I was only probably like four or five weeks pregnant and I wasn't gonna tell anybody, but um, I definitely had bloating as well in the beginning. Um, and then I had some implantation bleeding like the week or two after I found out that I was pregnant. It was really, really light and it was only one day. So that's normal. Um, and then I did have some pregnancy acne. I still do a little bit. My skin, like the hormones really, really mess with your skin. Some people, some pregnant women don't have any issues with acne. Mine kind of came in waves. There were some times like in the first and second trimester and even now in the third trimester that I will get breakouts and it'll feel like my skin's really oily and I'll get like the hard nodules. And typically just in my history, whenever I would get acne, it would be along the jawline. Um, my left side's pretty good uh, right now and kind of has been throughout my pregnancy, but my right side, as you can see down here, those are scars and maybe like little breakouts that are just tiny. That one right there, was a major one and it stays for a while. Like it just lingers, but that's my trouble area in general. And then um, when I had broken out, that's for my pregnancy, like that's where I would break out. Um, but like right now my skin feels, I gotta text Danny. He just messaged me and asked me if he still doesn't, if I still don't need him to pick me up anything for dinner. Cause I have leftover Buffalo Wild Wings and I just ate a spoonful of frosting and had some Pepsi and I'm gonna eat a couple Hostess cupcakes as well. Uh, so he just wanted to make sure he doesn't need to pick me up anything because I was gonna have him get me a wrap from this place called Evergreens that does like a lot of salads and wraps and that shit looked good because Danny got it before and like they mix in the dressing perfectly. Like it just looks so good. So I might get that tomorrow actually. I have my doctor's appointment again because I'm doing my weekly doctor's appointments and uh, I might, 
like I don't go out and go walking and get food anymore because I get swollen and I get stabbing pains. So I haven't really, like when I do go out for my appointments, I take lift rides and like don't walk long distances, but I might take a lift ride from the appointment afterwards to like an Evergreens and get something and then take a lift ride home. I would walk, I would love to walk, but it's just, it's not worth the swelling and like the pain afterwards. I'll give birth soon enough and like I can get back to my normal life. I mean, I'll have a baby, but like I can physically be okay again. So I think the last thing I left off with was uh, pregnancy acne. So yeah, um, not too horrible. And I think that my skin's also really sensitive too because I haven't been wearing makeup on my skin, like face makeup, like foundation or powder or anything. I will day to day, like fill in my brows and do some mascara just to like make me feel like I'm a human being. But um, if I don't wear makeup for a while, I feel like it'll react. And, uh, but yeah, it hasn't been too, too horrible. Um, but my skin is super sensitive. So if there's like any hormone changes, anything major, it definitely reacts. Um, mm. the congestion, the nasal congestion and the mucus that you have in your head is insane. I have never had that to that degree unless I was sick, like unless I had a cold or the flu. And that has been throughout my whole pregnancy. Um, the last month I did start taking, um, indigestion and like heartburn right now um for the last month i did break down and start taking benadryl every day <laughs> benadryl obviously makes you really uh um drowsy i believe they call it marked drowsiness <laughs> and it really really knocks me out so i take it at night because i'm more congested at night like when i'm laying down and things like that and then the morning i have this saline spray that i use <coughs> when I blow my nose, but I'm very, very selective about when I blow my nose because my nosebleeds have been next level, which I will get into. Um, and then the excess saliva. Yeah. There have been certain days where it like literally feels like I am, I have saliva pouring out of my mouth. Like it's crazy. And I haven't had too many headaches, but headaches have been a thing. I think like in my, I don't know if it was my first or second, it could have been like, first and second trimester, there was like a little bit, little while there where I would have these headaches that wouldn't, that couldn't be helped by Tylenol. And you can take Tylenol when you're pregnant, at least normally, but I always check with my doctor just to make sure that the things I'm taking are safe. So Benadryl, I was told by my doctor is safe to take, Tylenol safe to take. Um, and then I've been taking Dulcolax dual softeners every day, like the maximum dosage three every day uh, because if I didn't, I would be constipated and I would probably die because my constipation is bad. Even with the stool softeners, it's a lot. Um, and of course you can't take laxatives because laxatives can make you have contractions and it can make you miscarry your baby. So you can't do laxatives, but you can do stool softeners. But always, 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 always check with the doctor. Don't go by what people, other people say because your health in particular might like you might have different needs and different things that you can or can't take but in general those are safe in pregnancy like i have an uncomplicated i've had an uncomplicated pregnancy and i don't have any health issues um in terms of medicines that i can't take so those are safe for me um and then here recently i feel like a lot the past week or two i've had a couple times where i've had headaches that like nothing would really and i didn't take medicine for it um usually like if i have a headache I just need to eat something and it didn't go away whenever I ate something. But I don't think I took medicine for it. Anyway, oh, I think I'm going to do a, um, I have had some crazy dreams since I've been pregnant. So between just like the regular, just pregnancy, like when I'm not taking any medicine, um, I, I have wild dreams, like just crazy dreams. Um, and then when I take Benadryl, it makes my dreams even crazier at night because it knocks me out. Um, but I think I have like, a f I wrote, I've, I've written down a few dreams that I've had that were kind of cool slash interesting slash weird. Um, one time I woke up laughing during one of them 
And those are the best kind of dreams to have. I don't have those very often. Typically my dreams are recurring and they're not like, my dreams are pretty like dark and like not happy usually. If that tells me anything about me. But um, I think I'm gonna do just like probably a short video talking about the ones that I did write down that I can remember that stuck out to me. Uh, Cause dreams are interesting to me anyway. And uh, I always like to kind of hear about other people's dreams and it's just interesting stuff. So I think I'll do like a separate video about that, but, um, and then I don't know if I wrote it down for that video, but I will say like when I was deep in research mode for the baby and I was, you know, deciding on all the, all the things and that she's going to need, you know, the strollers, the cribs, things like that. Um, I did so much research and I looked for so, through so many options that I would have basically like these really weird like dreams on a loop about trying to find this particular item. And I would have dreams like that when I was like taking math classes because math was really hard in school and I stressed out a lot about it. And then whenever this past, this past time when I got this um, uh, certification uh, that I was going for, um, I was getting really, really stressed out about it because it's not like questions that you memorize and have the correct answer. Like it's situational stuff and it really, really stressed me out because I just like to know that there's a right answer and I was worried I was gonna fail it. So I would have dreams like that where like literally I would just be on a loop with the subject matter. So it would be the same thing with like the stroller travel system I would just, and I would wake up and I, like when you're in it, you, you can't make yourself stop and you wake up and you're just like, my God, like, I, I just, I don't want to think about this stuff. Like I just need to make myself stop, but you can't control it. Like when you're unconscious, I tried to put these in order of like how they occurred throughout my pregnancy. Like, but I have here that anytime I would eat or drink something, the baby will kick, um, or roll around. And obviously that, that was like, as she got bigger, as I would start feeling things, um, she definitely reacts whenever I eat or drink something, that's for sure. And I think that's just a normal baby thing. But the thing that really surprised me about that is how instant it is. Cause I, I, I would think that things would take time to get through your system, but I guess, I mean, she is connected to you via umbilical cord. So like maybe it is more instant than I would think, but she definitely reacts almost instantaneously um, when I eat or drink something. I did start feeling kicks uh, around 16 to 17 weeks. I wasn't sure what it would actually feel like because obviously I've never been pregnant before. Um, the first time I thought that I felt it and now looking back, I'm sure that that's what it was. I was driving and obviously I had my seatbelt on and I thought that I could feel like a flutter. And in hindsight, that was the first movements that I felt. I would also feel them um, normally, like especially early on, in the 16 to 17 week uh, range, um, since she wasn't super big yet, um, it would I would feel her when my stomach would be pressed up against something. So like when I would go to the bathroom, I got into the habit of like leaning forward and trying to empty out my bladder completely because that was one of the tips that I read early on that if you feel like you're not emptying out your bladder enough when you're pregnant, um, lean forward and it helps. So whenever I would do that, I would feel her move against my like knees. At first they felt like flutters and then they graduated to like rolls. They felt like she was like rolling around like a barrel roll or they felt like waves, which was kind of a cool feeling. Um, and she's most active in the middle of the night. And I feel like I also read that's normal for babies, but I just feel like it's totally because it's my child and I'm a night owl. My mom's a night owl, my sister's a night owl. Um, I think my dad might be too, but, um, it's pretty funny cause she's definitely very active overnight and I've been taking some videos recently of, I didn't go to bed last night until like fucking four o'clock in the morning. Um, oh, she's moving around right now, but even just sitting, like I get swollen and like have to lay down. So like right now, I don't know how long I'll be able to sit. But um, at 24 weeks, let's see. So I was able to actually feel her from the outside 
um, at 23 weeks. And Danny could feel her from the outside when she was 24 weeks and five days. He hasn't felt her kick a whole lot just because it's unpredictable. Um, so I try to get videos of when she is kicking so that you can see it, especially now since I'm 37 weeks and I have been the past month or so taking video of it because you don't know when it's going to happen. Sometimes you can like poke her and manipulate her to move, but otherwise you're just kind of like, he's just sitting there waiting for her to move forever. So he hasn't really felt her kick a lot, but, um, she, her position, I feel like she's been in this position for a really, really long time. Um, at least every ultrasound that I've had, um, and the last several times that I've been to the doctor and checked her and I've asked if they could tell which position she's in, she's been in the same position. She's always been head down, um, like her back or her chest area is like to the right and then she's curled up and then her feet are to my left. So most of the movement that I feel is on my left side where she's kicking me or where she's like pushing up her knees. Um, and then like, I would say, I did start like a stretch mark routine like, halfway through when I kind of started getting a bit of a bump. Um, and I started out with this oil, which this stuff is on my Instagram. Uh, I think my Instagram is Heather Alexandra 1007 but um, I took pictures of the actual products that I was using. But I started out with this like lavender scented belly oil, um, which was okay. And then I got this belly butter that's like cocoa butter and like a mixture of other different kinds of butter with cocoa butter, like shea butter. Um, anyway, that has been my favorite because it comes in this tin and it kind of like melts to your body temperature and you rub it in. I've preferred that and I've gotten that I've repurchased that most often. So basically at night is when I use it before I go to bed because it can be really greasy and uncomfortable and it does soak into your skin. So by the morning when you get up, you don't feel it as much and you're gonna shower anyway. And then my normal routine, which I did before I was pregnant, um, was put lotion on after I showered. So I put lotion on in the morning and then I do the belly butter at night. And that's pretty much it. And I don't think I have very many new stretch marks. I have some, especially like in my pelvic area where I swelled the most. You're welcome. And then the, on my hips, I had old stretch marks that you're able to see a little bit more because I'm bigger. Um, but stretch marks haven't really been an issue for me. My mom said she never really got stretch marks. I, I don't know if Amber got stretch marks or not. But anyway, um... And then night sweats. So I'm typically always cold. At night, even before I got pregnant, I would get warmer. So I would wake up and maybe put the AC down a degree or so. Um, but since I've been pregnant, like in the mornings and throughout the night, like I'll get really hot and I'll wake up in a sweat. To the point where like, at first I thought I was having like boob leakage, cause that's a thing. Cause you, I guess by now I have the colostrum in my boobs but I I don't know if it's like just sweat or if like I actually had leaking boobs. <laughs> and then another thing that would happen to me when I would get out and walk, because I don't cook, I go out and get my food <laughs> and I get takeout every day. And uh, when I would go walking, I would notice like my belly would just feel really tight and it would almost feel like it was like expanding. Like I felt like it would look bigger, which is a weird thing that would happen. Um, I did have like bleeding gums sometimes. It wasn't anything major, but like earlier in my pregnancy, I noticed that like when I would brush my teeth, I would spit and there'd be some blood. Um, and in even later in my pregnancy a little bit, but it wasn't, it didn't happen a lot, but I do know that's a symptom of pregnancy. And I did have that because I had all the symptoms, like literally every single fucking pregnancy symptom I had. Um, that's why I have all these notes, like pages of notes. Um, About 26 weeks to 34 to 35 weeks, I used the gym. Um, and that was partially because like, I was using my outings to go get food as exercise. But when Danny got laid off at the end of um, April, I 
we just got groceries and were very uh, conservative because we didn't know when he would get a job. He wound up getting a job like a few weeks after he had gotten laid off and has been at that job since and he likes it a lot. Um, but I was like, well, I have to get some physical activity. I want to be healthy, you know, since I'm not going out walking anymore. And our building has a really, really great gym on the roof that we never used before. And I'm just like, wow, why have we never used this before? They've got so much equipment. The view's insane. Like, so we started using it. And then even after he got back to work, we wanted to stick with it because we really enjoyed it. But at some point, I just started getting too tired and too swollen. And I was like, I just can't anymore. So I think I stopped around 34, 35 weeks. Um, and I would just do 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how I felt. I ideally would like to get 30 minutes. I would do 15 minutes on the treadmill and then 15 minutes on this bike um, that you just kind of like set back. And I don't know what kind of bike it was. It wasn't like the bikes where you sit up because it had a back on it. And you kind of could like lounge and just like work out your legs. But um, yeah, around ligament pain, I feel like continued pretty much throughout my whole pregnancy. It really ramped up when I started getting bigger um, and whenever I would like try and turn myself in bed or something like that. <laughs> Nosebleeds, man, every time I would blow my nose, I would just, I would just be like, I would brace myself because it would typically be my left nostril that would bleed. Sometimes my right, but mostly my left. And then one time it was both of them and uh, I'll get to that. And then also like when I would eat, I would have these massive burps. Like Danny thought it was so disgusting, but I would be eating and I would just like make this like, like every time I would take a bite, it was almost like so much air would come in and I would just be burping forever. And he just thought it was so fucking disgusting. And I was like, I can't fucking help it. But I did wind up having to call the doctor twice, um, the after hours, like on-call doctor. The first time was because I had not shat in days and I was so constipated and so gassy that like, I not only felt it in my stomach, but I felt it all the way up to like my chest and through my neck and stuff. I thought I was like having high blood pressure or like preeclampsia or something. I didn't know what was happening. And so I called and she was just like, look, get yourself some gas eggs. Like you can take stool softeners every day. And that was when I started taking stool softeners every day because um, even with the stool softeners, like it takes the edge off, but it's still bad. And it's again, every single symptom that I've had, I've gotten used to. You can get used to a lot in life, um, but it does take the edge off, but it's still, I'll just be honest, like it hurts to take a shit. At least I can get him out with stool softener. The second time that I called the doctor was one night I got to blow my nose and that's the thing that I don't do anymore. I don't blow my nose in the night anymore. I just deal with the congestion if I have it. That's why I started taking Benadryl and then doing the saline stuff that my doctor recommended because it does take the edge off and I don't want to do a nosebleeds in the middle of the night and be up constantly with that. Um, I would just rather sleep and then like get up in the morning and then get it all out. But, um, it was one night, it was like four o'clock, well, it was like four o'clock in the morning or something. And I went to blow my nose and both my nostrils started gushing blood. Like I'm talking about like pouring out of my head. I like got everywhere and I was trying to contain it and it took me an hour and a half to contain it. I called the doctor and I was like, do I need to go to the emergency room? Danny is in here. Like, do I need to call an ambulance? Like what's happening? Like he was scared. She was like, I mean, cause we know that, that, that nosebleeds are a part of pregnancy, but she was like, I think you're okay. It sounds like you're getting it under control. Um, you know, make sure that you get yourself some saline spray, take some Benadryl. Like I had resisted taking medicine up until that point, just because I, I, I am definitely not opposed to taking medicine if I need it and if it's safe and it was safe to take, but I was just trying to deal with it and like, but it just got to the point where I had to take medicine to maintain it because the nosebleeds were getting so bad. And, um, you know, I also live somewhere where it's really dry. So, um, anyway, yeah. And then there have been like, I remember sometimes my nosebleeds would be so bad that I would blow my nose and I would get blowback, like blood on my face. And 
one time I didn't even know it and I had it between my eyebrows and that shit was so fucking funny when I discovered it because I was like, Jesus, shit just blows back in my face because there's so much of it. Um, and again, some of these notes kind of like are jumping back and forth. I tried my best to to con condense them and like put them in an order that made sense. But literally like I've been all over the place and I just wanted to get them down. So I might be jumping back and forth. But when I finally got a baby bump that stayed, it was around 17 to 18 weeks. Um, and then around 19 weeks, I noticed that on the right side of my belly, if I was laying down, there would be like more of a mound of baby on that side. And that's because that's where most of her body was. So it's kind of interesting that like when I would lay down, my belly wouldn't be like perfectly round. It would be like almost bunched up on one side because her body was on the right side. So that was kind of interesting. Um, and I do want to do a video about like belly, like baby bumps and people's reactions and things because I feel like when you're pregnant and I've told Danny this before, like, I just feel like you're like a fucking unicorn or something. Like people just stare at you and they just like, they judge and all these things. And, and me, I really just don't give a shit if somebody judges me. Honestly, I judge other people, other people. We all do it. I don't do it to their face because that's rude as fuck and nobody cares about my opinion about them and like who does somebody think that they are to go up to somebody and be like wow you look like this or da 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 but in your head we all judge everybody but the things that people will say and just the reactions that you get are kind of interesting and I do want to do a video about that because for me I feel like it took a while for me to like really look pregnant and I feel like even at work because I quit working around 20 weeks and I feel like even at work, like people, no one said anything to me, but like, I wasn't looking pregnant and I feel like they were thinking like, this girl just wanted to quit. But honestly, like my baby wasn't that big, like, and it was my first baby in hindsight, like when I left, I think around 20 weeks, my baby would have been like maybe a pound. So, I mean, I wouldn't have a giant baby bump, but like, it's like even women that have had babies before are judgmental and are like, why aren't you bigger? And it's like, you've been through this. Don't you know how this works? It was pretty fascinating to me. Um, oh, and the thing, like speaking of the nosebleeds, the thing that I was surprised to learn is that when you are pregnant, you're producing 30 to 50% more blood in your body. And I confirmed that with one of the nurse practitioners. I was like, you know, I think I saw it in an app or I was doing some research online because I was having so many nosebleeds and I do know that you produce more blood because you're supporting a baby. But the fact that you are, and honestly, like I've had, I don't, I don't think my the veins in my hands kind of come and go. Sometimes they like look swollen as fuck. And I almost felt like that was like a predictor of like an, an, an impending nosebleed. Um, but yeah, like my veins, and I've put pictures of this on Instagram, like in my, in my, my hands and my forearms, like sometimes my veins will just be gigantic because you're just pumping so much blood in your body. Um, to the point where I don't feel it right now, but like maybe it's also because I'm coming to the end of my pregnancy, but I would be pumping so much blood, I guess, that I could feel it in my fingertips. Like I could just feel my pulse in my fingertips. It, it was just weird. But most, mostly like the swelling that I've had though has been like in the thigh and like, but mostly like the pelvic, like vaginal area. Like this is gross, but this is real life. And my feet have swollen a little bit here recently, but not that much. My hands sometimes feel swollen. Sometimes I'll wake up and they'll just feel really stiff and a little swollen, but like just visually it hasn't been that bad. But my main area has been the vag. And I checked with my doctor and I looked online and it said that it's normal and it does happen. And she was just saying, you know, with my particular anatomy, that's just the area that is gonna swell. And I guess you know, your baby is like pressing on so many veins and arteries and obviously with the way she's laying um, and that she's been there like most of my pregnancy, wherever she's laying is just making me have a giant puffy vag. And so if I walk or if I sit up too much or whatever, like it just gets gigantic um, and painful and sometimes numb. The cravings that I've had, the main one is are sweets. Like I have been craving ice cream. I love just frosting straight out of the can. And these are things that like I've always loved. I mean, when I was a kid, I could tear up a can of frosting. But um, before I got pregnant, I would have dessert multiple times a week. I love dessert, but I gotta have it every day. 
and like if nothing else I just have to make sure I eat my dessert like I eat regular food too but dessert takes precedence um also like fruit drinks um I had a plain lemonade from Chick-fil-a once during my pregnancy and like I hate plain lemonade. I like flavored lemonade, like strawberry or raspberry or whatever. But, um, yeah. And then I've had the red Gatorade. And then today I just went and bought the blue Gatorade. Haven't had Gatorade in like probably over a decade. Wanted Gatorade. Um, I crave sweet tea from Chick-fil-A, but I don't, we don't have a Chick-fil-A downtown and I'm not driving right now because our tags are expired and we're trying to get rid of our car because I don't use it every day like I used to when I worked. Danny doesn't use it because he walks to work. Jolly Ranchers, hadn't had Jolly Ranchers in probably over a decade. Bought a big ass box of watermelon Jolly Ranchers on Amazon. Cheesy garlic bread from Galliano's. That's in SeaTac near Tequila. I haven't been in a while because I've been driving, but that shit, I used to get that all the time. Oh my God, it was so good. But they do have uh, zip cars and things like that that you can take advantage of that um, I'm gonna have to start going like once or twice a month because I miss that shit so bad. Um, and then ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. So there's Ben and Jerry's and Tequila in the South Center Mall that I went to all the time. And then here there's one in Green Lake that's not too far away that's near where I've had to go to my doctor a couple times when she's not at her main spot where I normally go that's closer to where I live. I've been hitting up Ben & Jerry's. I fucking bought chocolate therapy ice cream on Amazon because it's hard to find. Uh, four pints of it. And I've already finished off a pint and I've almost fi I've almost finished up an off another one. And I bought a pack of four. Um, fresh fruit was something that I also felt like I needed to have at every meal as well. Or at least every other meal. Like fresh fruit, craved it. Um, I had Rice Krispies. I bought some at the store, like this one, just like long Rice Krispie. Um, hadn't had it probably, I don't know, 10, 10 or 15 years. Cause I'm mostly like a chocolate gal, like cupcakes, cookie, you know, cake, things like that. Um, had a Rice Krispie treat and that shit was really good. Had, had, haven't had it in a while. Um, and then Dahlia's Bakery, which isn't too far from here, when I was walking to get my food, like multiple times a week, I would go there and get their chocolate truffle cookies. Oh my God. It's the best. Those are probably my favorite cookies because they're really, really fudgy. Um, and I think that they're flourless. My favorite thing. Um, and Danny's went and got them for me. Uh, we stocked up. I, I was like, give me six of them. Um, and I would typically have like two a day. And they're pretty good sized cookies but so good um i've eaten quesadillas a lot so I've, I've i've craved cheese a lot um and then like tempura sushi and i obviously wouldn't eat anything raw it would be shrimp or crab salad which i mean honestly like that's the kind of sushi i would prefer anyway like when i wasn't pregnant but i would get like raw tuna on sushi, but like smaller amounts of it. Cause I tip, I mean, I used to love the shit off some raw fish, but like I had not so much anymore. Um, and Jimmy John's, I've been getting the club tuna from Jimmy John's like every week and you can have canned tuna. Whenever I found out that I was pregnant, they gave me this little card that I put on the fridge that tells you with regard to seafood, what kind is safe to eat and how many times a week you can have it. And I think you can have canned light tuna which is probably what they use at jimmy john's um like two to three times a week and i typically have it like once maybe twice but typically once a week um yeah and i was hitting up tcby like when i was going out to get food like once a week i would go and get a cup of yogurt with like all the, the toppings and everything and then i would go because um in the city center here they have a tcby and a mrs fields in the same place so i would go and get a sandwich cookie and it would eat as well. <laughs> and I would eat that. I would save that for later. I would have my my frozen yogurt then, like right then, obviously, because it melts. And then I would have the cookie and then Jimmy John's for later because there's a Jimmy John's right across from the Mrs. Fields and the TCBY. And I would get either a uh, two sugar cookies with frost with uh, sprinkles and then get cream cheese frosting in the center to make a sandwich cookie. Or I would get two uh, semi-sweet or milk chocolate chip cookies and put like fudge frosting in the center to make a sandwich cookie. And I would always tell them put extra. Yes. Um, and then 
at around 26 weeks, um, the baby, I would feel kicks when she would, when I would be going to sleep, which is really, really reassuring. And then upon waking up, um, cause as anybody that's ever been pregnant knows, like if you feel like for like an hour or two or something that you don't feel them kicking, you get worried that something's wrong. She's not as active, like in the afternoon, like in the day, but I'll still feel kicks here and there. She's most, she's most active at night and overnight. And then maybe like first thing in the morning, but like midday, I think is when she chills and like takes a rest. Um, and then just as far as like how I've been feeling, like the feelings that I've had, um, I've been really, really like moody and kind of pissed off. It's really a roller coaster of emotions, honestly. Um, I've had days where I've just been raging and have no patience and just like the emotional and physical toll that pregnancy takes in your body it is a lot and i feel so lucky that i was able to stop working around 20 weeks because so many women can't and i feel like it would have been a lot harder on me had i had to keep a regular job and again i think if it was a job that i felt professionally or personally satisfied in like the job was fine but it was something that i was wanting to move on from sooner because it's something that I had done a lot for a long time like while I was in school and I was hoping that after I got my degree and was pursuing a certification that I'd be able to move on sooner and that wasn't the case just for budget reasons um but I had no problem with the people like I mean I left on a good note but I think the fact that I was pregnant and not feeling good and I didn't have to work and I was able to quit um compared with the fact that I wasn't satisfied with my role, um, ultimately made me decide to leave. But if I was on a career path that, if I was further along the career path I wanted to be on, I may have been able to tolerate it for longer. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna try and make videos and like do podcasts and like, I have a couple of children's book ideas that I wanna pursue and, um, yeah, I'm going to be a, a full-time stay-at-home mom until she's in kindergarten. We don't want to put her in daycare. And I don't think that I can really go back to work when she's in preschool because from my understanding, preschool doesn't last that long and it really wouldn't be any point for me to go into work then. So if nothing like personally that I do takes off in the next five years, I will go back to work and um, hopefully be able to have a career that's satisfying. But if I can just work from home and be like all these other YouTubers or business owners or entrepreneurs or whatever that do things for themselves. If something like that took off for me, I would be so happy. And then just keep doing my full-time mom thing as well. Cause obviously that has to be my first priority now because I'm, I have a daughter and, um, that's just the arrangement that we have and that we're happy with. And, um, I'm excited to be a mom and I'm excited to be the one that takes care of her most of the time. I'd rather do that than daycare. So, um, but I also really, really want to focus on things that personally fulfill me. And if I'm at home and I have a camera and an internet connection and like ideas, I mean, why not try to do both? A lot of people do, and I'm still a person and I still have things that I want to accomplish. And I feel like I could definitely balance that with a baby for sure. But we'll see how smoothly that goes at first. Another feeling that I have is like protectiveness because we've all heard crazy stories about pregnant women, pregnant women being targeted and having the baby, like being killed for their babies. I'm always really like cautious about talking about it when I'm out. Cause I feel like pregnant women just like, they just, they just track conversation. Like people just want to talk to a pregnant woman about Oh, what are you having? What are you naming her? And I'm paranoid because I'm just like, I don't want anybody to know, any stranger to know that I know her. And I want like a stranger to know her name because I'm just like, what if they're prodding for information? Like, it's weird. Like one time I went, the last time I went and got my nails done and I actually need to go pretty soon, but I'm trying to time it so that like, it's not too long before I give birth because I'm going to have to like recover. And I just don't want there to be a time when like my nails are looking really, really fucked up. So I'm trying to time it so that it's like, right before I give birth and then like once I'm healed up and stuff I can get them done again like nobody cares about this um when I was at the nail salon I swear like because now you can see that I'm pregnant 
and she was asking me, you know, all the typical questions and, you know, I just typically like to like not talk, but I swear one of the questions she asked me was like where I was going to be having her. And I'm like, that's a weird fucking question. And I was just like, uh, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I just, I basically just wanted to downplay it because people are weird and scary and I just don't want to be a target for somebody. And that's probably really, really paranoid. But I live in downtown Seattle where there was recently just a random stabbing. Random shit happens all the time. It's not inconceivable that you would be targeted for something like that because people are crazy. Earlier, how I was talking about, you know, she kind of chills midday, like, and isn't super, super active. I, I, because I've had so many symptoms and I felt so shitty for most of my pregnancy, and again, I'm used to it, but like, if I was ever having a day where I felt good, I felt like, oh God, something's wrong. Because if I'm not having these symptoms, am I not pregnant anymore? Is something wrong? Um, so it's weird, the feelings that you have. One of the feelings that I was actually surprised that I have had is I feel like I'm going to miss being pregnant because it will feel like I'm losing something even though I'm not like she's not going anywhere like she's just going to be on the outside where we can hold her and Danny can actually be involved but it's going to feel weird and kind of sad when I can't feel her kicking anymore um but I feel both ways about it because then I'm also going to be really excited to just get back to feeling like myself and having my body back to myself and not not feeling bad because prior to pregnancy I feel like I had a lot of energy and I felt good most days and um so but I think overall it's something that I'm grateful to have gone through and I'll have these memories and um as long as we have a healthy baby like but I, that's why I want to document this time I want to get as many pictures as I can I want to memorize like when she moves like I'll just I just sit there and I just want to memorize how she's moving because you know I really don't feel like I want to have another baby and I may never feel this again so as as long you know as long as pregnancy feels like it does feel like you're pregnant for a while but also it feels like you're not pregnant for that long and then once you're you know winding down and you're getting close to the due date you realize oh my god like there's certain things I'm gonna miss you just have like a mixture of emotions. Like you, there are gonna be things that you miss, even though like I wouldn't wanna be pregnant forever, that would be miserable. <laughs> but um, it's something that I never thought I wanted or was indifferent to having, but I just feel like things are now just starting to wind down so fast. And it's just like, oh God, like I just need to make sure that I memorize it all. Cause I'm just, a mess and I'm gonna miss it and um yeah it's just important to me that no matter what phase of life that I'm in and what I'm going through that I always focus on the positive and don't take it for granted um because you can't get that time back basically At 30 weeks, I started getting sciatic numbness, um, and it was on the right side. So it'd be like my right ass cheek and my right back part of my thigh. And I still, like, I just recently had it again. So when I do have it, um, that's where it's at. And it's just another thing where your baby is pressing on certain areas like arteries and veins, and it's a thing. <laughs> So it's just like, you just feel numb for a while, but then it goes away, but then it can come back again. And it's only that one the, that one area um, on my right side. And I, I don't know if it has to do with the fact that, I've, I mean, it's probably how she's laying and everything, but um, <coughs> <coughs> at 30 weeks is when I started noticing, I was noticing being comfortable, like pushing under my ribs because she's so big now that, and she's head down. So her feet are always pressing on my ribs. Um, and the one thing that I, I never knew, and I must be really dumb, I never thought about it, but I never realized that your uterus raises like progressively throughout your pregnancy. Um, your uterus starts like really low, like in your groin. And then as your baby gets bigger, it actually goes up and it can get to like five inches above your belly button. And so that's why you have you know, the uncomfortable feeling under your ribs when they, your baby gets so big. Um, 
I just thought your uterus was where it was. <laughs> I didn't know that it, it moved. And then I learned that it takes your uterus six to eight weeks to shrink back down to size. Um, which that's not so crazy, but I just didn't know that it literally just like moved where it was in your body. Like that was surprising to me. Another thing that you will get, or well, you can get, is like random stabbing asshole pain. Any reasons why I imagine you would get it in your pelvic area. Um, Cause like my pelvic floor literally feels like it's gonna crumble to dust. Like when I'm walking, if I just use my foot to like push something, I don't know, like on the floor out of the way, it literally feels like it's going to crush and just crumble and fall apart and turn to dust. Like the baby is so low now. Last time I was at the doctor, they did this the cervix check, the cervix check, and I'm one and a half centimeters dilated. And there's just so much pressure down there because she's descending into my pelvis, preparing to be born, that my pelvis just feels like it could break. So I'm assuming your random stabbing asshole pain, same reason. That doesn't happen as often, but it's happened a couple times now. Um, when I was 30 weeks uh, is the first time I felt the baby had hiccups. And she'll have them multiple times a day. And it literally just feels like a little body inside your body having hiccups. Like it's the craziest feeling, but it actually happens a lot to me. And I've read on these forums that a lot of other women experience it multiple times a day. My baby definitely has hiccups a lot. It is so hard to get out of bed these days. Like when I wake up, especially since I've been taking Benadryl and it makes me sleep for longer, which really I need because I sleep sucks when you're pregnant. Um, but also when, when you're knocked out from taking Benadryl, you don't move as much. So you have a six to seven pound baby and you have to pee. So when you wake up, you feel like you've been hit by a bus. You feel like you've been flattened. And then it's really hard to just physically get yourself out of bed, basically. My bed's not super high because it's like a platform bed. So it's just like the platform and then the mattress. So I have to like kind of do the little turtle, turtle thing where you're just like, all right. And then at 31 weeks is when I had my first Braxton Hicks. And I was laying in bed at night and I could feel my body, my belly seize up a little bit. And it was would be like that for like 30 seconds or something. And then it would like release. And it's not painful, but um, that was the first time I ever had it. And I remember reading that it says like your baby uh, can be really active beforehand. And that could like have something to do with it as well. Um, and then one time I was getting a, um, uh, the physician's assistant was doing a measurement of my belly at one of my regular checkups. And she's like, oh, you're having a Braxton, Hick Braxton Hicks contraction right now. And I didn't feel it at all, but she could feel my belly like tense up. So it's kind of interesting. I'm sure I've had more and I just haven't known it. Um, but, but I have, you know, here recently just been having a lot of period like cramps and the stabbing and digging feeling in my vag. And so when that happens, I just lay down for it to pass because I'm not in labor, but it's your body preparing for labor. So, um, yeah. And then one thing that's been really, really weird that I cannot explain is I'll burp and I will taste slash smell cilantro or mint when I haven't eaten either. But now that she's so big and doesn't have any room, I feel like most of the day her movements are like kind of slow in general because she doesn't have a lot of room, but she still will get like explosive movements and press out really hard on my belly to where like you see her pressing out. Um, and I feel like in the middle of the night is when she's, when she like really moves around the most. Um, and she's, she's hit me some, a few good times where I've just like gasped because it'll be out of nowhere and they, she's pretty strong now. Um, and I read here recently that if you were to put your finger in the palm of her hand now, she would be able to grasp it. So that's pretty cool at 37 weeks. When I was, when she was 32 weeks, I could actually interact with her. So, uh, one night she was kicking on my left side a lot. 
and I would press in at her feet at her feet and then she would press out like in response to my my hand pressing into her so that was pretty cool and I, that went on for like 20 minutes and I just thought that was the coolest thing because she could actually feel me on the outside and she was reacting to me um this one night she actually launched herself off the left side because that's where her feet are and then like headbutted me it was like around 32 weeks and then headbutted me on the right side and it almost felt like she was doing this jellyfish motion um and she did it like over and over a few times and it was like the craziest thing and all these things always happen because i'm awake and danny's asleep and i have nobody to tell it to <laughs> and i'm just like holy shit, that was so cool um and then one thing that i've had is like an aversion to my cats particularly mocha because especially since i've gotten bigger and it's just physically really uncomfortable for me i just don't want a cat laying on me because i just feel crowded and also like i want to be able to stretch out like i'm so uncomfortable i, I just i can't have another thing on me and i feel so bad because she wants to be near me and sometimes i'll let her just because i feel terrible and i feel like it hurts her emotionally <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've definitely had an aversion to my cats, um, just because I just, I need space. Like, I just can't have something on me all the time because I'm just so physically uncomfortable. But 32 weeks, um, is when I wrote down that the, the lightning or the stabbing, uh, and it almost would feel like burn sometimes, like in my badge started, um, and then I think about the same time as when I was able to start seeing like movements, like if I would be laying, laying under a blanket, her movements would be so strong that I would see them underneath the blanket. I think I also have video of that too. Um, but yeah, it, like it feels like I'm either an insomniac or I'm exhausted. So I take so many naps just like randomly. And it's funny cause we call it getting took I think we got that quote from like Pineapple Express or something, but um, literally like I'll be laying down because I'll be in pain and then suddenly like a nap, I'll just have to take a nap. Like physically, I can't control it. Like it might even be close to bedtime, but I'm like, I need to take a nap on the couch right quick before I can even move to bed. Like it takes you over so hard and fast that you literally, you don't, you don't have a say. And I've never taken so many naps in my life. It's crazy. And I'm, I'm sure that when she's here, it'll be similar because I'll be up taking her, care of her when she's up and I'll just have to sleep whenever I can. But um, 33 to 34 weeks, I started getting the period light cramps. 35 weeks, I had noticeable foot swelling that day. I noticed it mostly in my right foot. Um, and then the body aches if I lay in one spot for too long. Um, 35 weeks plus two days is when I started ordering in or having Danny get my food because I was having tons of cramps and pressure and poor circulation that I just felt like, okay, if I'm being offered help, I just need to take it easy because my body is telling me like, you need to like, stop. <laughs> um, I hate ordering in though. Like the other day I ordered from the golden olive and I ordered a Euro chicken sandwich, Greek fries and a baklava. They forgot my fucking baklava. And that shit just pisses me off. That's why I don't order in because they always forget something or get something completely wrong. And then it fucks up my day. So I would rather just like take a lift ride and go get it or walk to go get it or drive to go get it or whatever. Um, but I'm dealing with it because this is going to be short-lived. Like, I will be back to my normal self, like, after I'm all healed up, after I've given birth. So, but I'm just dealing, dealing with it for now. And if there's anything that's kind of, like, near around where Danny works and he comes home and he, like, walks that way, he'll just bring bring me something. He doesn't mind at all. The thing that you'll hear about, too, that happens to pregnant women um, is just getting full really, really fast. I'm a slow eater as it is but I have to really eat just really small amounts throughout the day because I'll take a bite of something and I'll feel full and I'm like, okay, I know I'm not actually full and I need more food than this. So, I mean, it is crazy how, how full you feel because you really are full of baby and everything is pressed and condensed and 
I'm not going to know what it feels like to feel normal again. Like, it's going to be so bizarre to feel normal again and not have a baby taking up so much weight or so much area in my body. Um, another thing that happens, you know, because of like my circulation issues and the blood pumping and everything is, um, my legs will fall asleep on the toilet, like bad. That never happened to me before pregnancy, but I'll get up and like, I'll have to be careful about how I'm standing because like, I can't feel my legs and I'm worried about like fucking twisting an ankle. And then I'll have to stand at the sink perfectly still because you know what happens like when your shit gets numb, you get that tingling feeling after and it hurts. So that has been happening to me a lot. Um, and then like when I'm standing up or even like when I was, when I'm like sitting sometimes, like I was just saying earlier, like I just feel tingly, like almost lightheaded. Like I'm not, like my blood's not circulating right. Um, and then one of the smells that I have loved this pregnancy, I haven't bought Pine Sol in a while, but suddenly I was like, I want to buy like multi-purpose Pine Sol mixed with water and use that. Cause I was running low on kitchen cleaner and I bought like the original Pine Sol, the original Pine Sol smell. That smell smelled so fucking good. Like I wanted that shit in a fucking perfume. Like my sister, I remember her telling me that her thing when she was pregnant is she loved the smell of Clorox wipes. Well, me, I love the fucking smell of Pine Sol. And I always liked the smell of Pine Sol. But it just smells so good. Not like I could eat it good, but like like I want to wear it as perfume good. I think I like I have notes here about the digging and the clawing where her head is like on the lower right and then feeling the intense pelvic pain, the burrowing, the clawing, the digging. And that's all of her descending for birth. I think I've talked about that enough, but I made another note about that. Um, and basically there are times when I have spurts of energy and I take advantage of those when I can, but I definitely take frequent breaks and I listen to my body when I need to stop. Um, so I think that's pretty important because for me, like I wanted to be as active as I could up until as, you know, for as long as I could. Um, but also you don't want to overexert yourself and overdo it. I mean, there's no point in doing that. Um, so that's the, one of the important things is like, you know, if you have, if you're having a good day, cause like, I feel like my day is kind of alternate. I'll have a good day one day, bad day the next day. And the last thing I have is just like describing the types of kicks. I've already talked about the flutters and the rolling and the kicks and jabs early on. Um, the head butts, the digging, explosive kicking. She, there were some times where she was like having seizure like movement in there. And I was like a little worried. Um, and then a, a f there have been a few times where out of nowhere, it feels like she'll flex her whole body at once. So I'll feel it everywhere. And it was, and it really like makes you realize how big your baby is, but it's just those like reflexes that they're practicing, you know? Um, yeah. So I can't believe I actually covered it all. It says I've been recording for 56 minutes, but I actually had to stop the video and I have like more stuff that I recorded. So I've been recording for over an hour. So I was right that it was a long video, but the next video I wanna talk about um, all the doctor's visits. Cause for me, I mean, I think that we all have a general idea about the doctor's visits that you do have when you're pregnant, but I didn't know all of the particulars um, beforehand. There are certain things that I learned as I went along that I think that some people might find helpful. So the next video I'll do on doctor's visits, but that's it for now. And, um, yeah, that's it.